Artificial lab-grown meat is no longer just a pipe dream, but rather today's reality that has been proven to be both delicious and real. The many decades of research that went into creating artificial cellular meat have finally concluded in a product that has already been brought onto select store shelves. The advantages compared to the so-called plant-based meats are enormous, and it may even beat our regular meat in the majority of categories. Welcome to AI News. Today I will show you the first US startup that managed to bring its groundbreaking synthetic meat into stores, and finally what the very near future holds for lab-grown meat. Synthetic meat has been a rather new invention and has only really just now been brought out of the research labs which makes it unsurprising that the far majority of the United States population has never heard of it before. But on the other hand, globally, the demand for clean meat is increasing due to growing consumer concerns about their health, animal welfare and our environment. Plant-based meat options, which were made popular by Beyond Meat and Impossible Foods, are becoming increasingly common on supermarket shelves and restaurant menus. But their potential is severely limited by the reality that plant-based meats cannot realistically imitate animal cells or muscles in terms of looks. They also heavily lack in proteins and other similar healthy building blocks of regular meat. So as the alternative to plant meat, their so-called clean meat, which is grown from animal muscle cells in a laboratory. However, with clean meat, which is often also called synthetic meat, development has been at a very nascent stage for the past five or so years and was coupled with very high production costs. But just recently, the US-based startup, Eat Just, has managed to beat the odds, and managed to bring together thousands of hours of research into the first in the world. Regulatory allowed, real, high-quality meat created directly from animal cells for safe human consumption, which they have called, good meat. The process of creating synthetic meat is actually rather simple. Artificial meat is created by painlessly harvesting muscle cells from a living cow. Scientists then feed and nurture the cells, so they multiply to create muscle tissue, which is the main component of the meat we eat. It is biologically exactly the same as the meat tissue that comes from a cow. 20,000 of these small strands of meat are then combined to create one normal-sized hamburger. There are two facts you might have derived from that process. First of all, the process takes up an order of magnitude less space than regular meat farming methods due to it only needing a few cells from a single cow and having that grow by itself. This greatly lowers environmental impacts and gas emissions that would otherwise be substantial. The even more obvious advantage would be that animal welfare is greatly improved by the fact that no animals have to be killed in the process of getting to these cells and thus the environment in which they would live, would be much less crowded. While the process of creating that meat does certainly sound pretty strange, it is actually much more normal and its results more delicious than you may think. Remember that the cells which eventually form the sack of meat and muscle is taken from a real animal and is grown in the same way that it would have grown inside of the animal and thus resulting in the same kind of meat in the end. It's no less high quality than regular meat. In fact, it's actually a lot more healthy to eat due to the animal not having growth hormones or other medication injected into it and that ending up inside of its meat. The only disadvantage of this process would be the speed. But the gold rush for this industry has just begun with hundreds of new and old companies giving it a go and inventing new processes of creating artificial meat. But it's not just all gloom, since if it were, there wouldn't be a reason to keep any real meat on the counter at the supermarkets. You might have wondered what the price of the meat they are selling would be set at. Well, it is $50 for a single chicken nugget. It's not a nugget from a 10 meter tall chicken, it's the kind of chicken you all probably know. The baby kind of chicken. But it's not as bad as you may think actually. Because just 8 years ago, the price for a comparable piece of synthetic meat was a staggering $375,000. That is a 7,500 times decrease in cost in just 8 years. That means that in another 8 years, the price of a chicken nugget would be at around 30 cents and it only decreasing from that point onwards which makes it cheaper than its real meat counterparts. There is also the factor that according to the general public, Many would never consider eating artificial meat, even if it were to cost less than regular meat. Although I am not too worried about it since I believe their idea of artificial meat is something that tastes off and isn't actually real meat. Where both of the factors are actually incorrect since it's technically real meat and thus tastes the same. The only thing that's different is that it's not directly grown inside of an animal. 
Currently, the small scale of current cultured meat production requires a relatively high use of energy and therefore carbon emissions. But once those are scaled up its manufacturers say it will produce much lower emissions and use far less water and land than conventional meat. The last challenge would be getting regulatory approval in other nations and increasing production. Countries like the Americas or many African countries aren't nearly as picky in terms of new ways to produce food while the European Union would be. So like with many groundbreaking new technologies, people living in the EU would need to wait just a tad bit longer to get a taste of artificial meat. Although how much real meat lobbyists are going to stuff the pockets of regulators with money to prevent them from allowing artificial meat is yet to be seen and may be the biggest hurdle of them all in the end. Although maybe the real meat companies aren't even that far behind in producing artificial meat themselves considering how much more simple and profitable it would be. Only time will tell in that regard. I think the approval in Singapore is one of the most significant milestones in the food industry in the last handful of decades. It's an open door, and it's up to us and other companies to take that opportunity. I personally really hope that this leads to a world in the next handful of years when the majority of meat doesn't require killing a single animal or tearing down a single tree. Being able to consume meat without having to feel even remotely bad would probably even make up for a potentially slight shift in taste compared to regular meat. There is no doubt in my mind that within the next 10 years, artificial meat will make up a big percent in terms of daily food intake for the general population. In fact, scientists believe that already by 2040, the majority of meat would no longer come from dead animals which sounds absolutely great. Just imagine the positive environmental effects this would have. And if I had to summarize it in one thing, one thing that resonates with me, it's that I believe that eating well should be a basic right. So we started this company just to try to fix it, to try to make eating well a basic right. And our big idea is that it's not that the biggest companies in the world don't care, it's that the biggest companies in the world don't have the tools to do anything about it. We have soy and corn and processed sugar and conventional animal protein. A lot of this stuff, my cinnamon rolls and nacho and cheese and Burger King chicken sandwich were made out of. And it is really hard if you just have that stuff to make food that is healthier, food that is sustainable, food that tastes really good, and food that's accessible. The toolkit sucks, and we need to expand it. And our goal is to build this out, to make it easier for good people to do the right thing, because it shouldn't be hard to make this kind of green innovation that we want happen. Now, in the world of meat, $1.1 trillion worth of meat is eaten every single year. And the train, unfortunately, is moving farther and farther away from the station. More people are eating meat today globally than were yesterday. Plants are a part of it, but animals, ironically, are also a part of it. But not animals in the conventional way, because today, when we have a burger, we have a piece of chicken, or we have duck, today the idea of eating meat and eating animals is one and the same. Thank you for watching AI News. We consistently report on the newest technologies that are shaping the future of our world. We'd appreciate you subscribing and watching our other videos. See you around and take care.